Yes, welcome to the Jamaica Young Police Channel. To our loyal viewers, subscribers and Patreon members. At the channel, we are a group of law-abiding citizens who believe in the rule of law and respect the rights of every citizen. But not the ones who do not subscribe to such behavior. We do believe in and support preemptive strikes because they save lives. This is a logical conclusion because preemptive strikes save lives and prevent the further loss of lives. We are all about saving lives at this channel. We at the channel aid criminals with a passion and do not want them over here. We do not want your views, your subscriptions, your likes or your comments. Please go elsewhere where the red carpet is waiting for you. Over here, we want you to go to prison or the departure lounge at Madden. Moving on to today's video. Yes, one thing we can tell you over here at the Jamaica Young Police Channel. We do not slander or defame or said or make controversial statements about anyone. Whatever you hear in here at the Jamaica Young Police Channel is the truth and nothing but the truth. Although some of the whatever we are going to say, it's been backed up by intelligence and we're just speaking from a police perspective. Someone who have received information, obtained, and we decimate it. We at the Jamaica Young Police Center, you know that as a former member of the Jamaica um, Constabulary Force, you know, we are unafraid. So today, we today yes, so if you look right now on the LCD, you will see that, um, yes, you see that man in the middle, um, we're not going to call his first name. His name is Dad. He's a detective. Dad. Yes. And that man to the left, of the, that's the man with the arrow. So it's five person on, on the thumbnail. To the left of that, that's Christopher Dudus Quark. To the right of Philip Dad, that's the former commissioner of police, Lucius Thomas. He was the head of um, Special Branch. Below Christopher Dudus Quark, that is Buju Bantan, uh, Mark Myrie. And beside Buju Bantan, that is Donald Zeke Phipps. Yes, so based on information received and obtained from our reliable sources, um, you know that we have a farmer, member of the Jamaica Defence Force, um, who used to work at the intelligence unit. Yes, and this man is unafraid. This man is a real Jamaican patriot. So you, um, so you look at your thumbnail, you see that it says Christopher Dudu Squawk save Detective Dad from an assassin, assassin bullet orchestrated from your favorite artist via Zeke's. Yes, and if you notice, we say artist, we did not mention any name. But if you look on the thumbnail, and you can infer, it's based on information received and obtained. It's allegedly coming from, yes, your big time Rastaman, yes, Bojo Bantan. And you're going to hear this um, former intel intelligent officer of the Jamaica Defence Force, because they were deep in the belly of criminality. Going to reveal some shocking things about um, Bojo Bantan. Yes, even Bojo Bantan and Beanie Man, even, um, he, he's going to tell you about Bojo Bantan um, marrying to a woman in Africa, and, his, and Lana, that his baby mother, did not know. And it's Beanie Man, Beanie Man um, wanted to marry the woman in Africa, and when he found out, Beanie Man, yes, but Beanie Man is a big in farmer. Beanie Man is the one who found out and run, and run and as he came off the plane, he ran straight to Bujabantan's baby mother, Lana, and told her that Bujabantan was married. Yes, the same Beanie Man, uh, Moses Davis, based on the information received and obtained. Uh, you're going to hear that, um, yes, <laughs> Bujabantan had a girlfriend, a China girlfriend by the name of Kim. And when he went to pick up Lana at the airport, and Kim, Kim was the next door neighbor, yes, of this um, farmer. JDF, and I'm telling you, this man is a patriot. You understand? When we say patriot, I'm telling you, the on, only two police officers I have known so far since I'm doing this channel um, can come can compare it with this man is Detective Evan Blake and Detective Morgan. Everyone else, they are all cowards. No, well, you cannot talk about Dadrick Henry. Dadrick Henry is in a class by himself. Dadrick Henry is real yes real real detective so we ain't talking about dadrick henry yes but i can tell you this miu man yes and when a man can tell you all these things 
from based on um, his experience, telling you from a first person, you understand? You know that this is a patriot. Yeah, because this man used to live beside Kim. Yes, and you're going to hear some things about even car stealing and, and other things. Even a big police officer, yeah, you're going to hear um, even in... Yes, this man, because this is a man, you know. I, I'm telling you, man, I am so proud of this man. This man, you know, um, someone who was born and raised in the same um, in the same environment as I. He's from Kingston East. Yes, PMP community. You cannot tell him nothing about the PMP either. And he will tell you. This man even had a brother who was a Dan, a big drugs dealer. You're going to hear him. And he's telling you. You understand? But he does. You're going to hear even some artists who used to sniff coke up by Swallowfield because he had seen them for himself. And he's, you understand? So, there's so many things that you're going to hear from this man. But today, we're going to tell you, yeah, we're just going to give you the first, the taste of what's to come. You understand? Because this is not only shocking to know that um, they wanted to kill a police officer. So today, we fearlessly uncover the truth behind the influential figures in Jamaican society. In this eye-opening video, we explore the controversial status of Mark Bujibantan Myrie. A man held on a pedestal as a role model to Jamaican youths despite his questionable background. As a society, Jamaicans often grant those who have attained certain status the benefit of the doubt, whether they are elites or ordinary individuals. Excuses seem to flow freely, even when faced with damning evidence. This leniency, sympathy is concerning, especially when it's even someone like Bujabantan whose actions are far-reaching consequences. Yes. So one scene as a recording, tasting, one scene and a recording, tasting cocaine, a substance responsible for destroying countless lives worldwide. Bujibantan's questionable choices stand in stark contrast to the image he portrays. Moreover, his close affiliation with Donald Zeke's Phipps, who allegedly hold a dark connection to multiple killings, allegedly raise serious concern about Bujibantan's true character. In this gripping expose, we are honored to have one of our esteemed intelligence contributor, a retired Jamaica Defense Force Intelligence Unit member, share his first hand information. With his extensive experience and in-depth knowledge of the criminal underworld, he fearlessly presents his findings revealing a side of Bujibantan that many may not be aware of. Prepare to be enlightened as we delve into the truth behind Bujibantan's controversial status in Jamaican society. Our Jamaican patriot will leave no stones unturned. Illuminating the realities hidden behind the facade, join us as we unveil the truth. So we fearlessly delve into the truth behind criminal activities that plague our society. Join us as we unmask the hidden truth and shed light on the realities of crime without bias or political affiliation. In this thought-provoking video title, Unmasking the Hidden Truth, Revealing Criminal Realities Without Bias, we aim to expose those involved in criminality for who they are. No longer will your secrets remain concealed as our mission is to bring your true persona to the forefront and shatter any false images created around you. At the Jamaica Young Police Channel, we believe in transparency and the power of unveiling the truth. Our dedicated team is committed to showcasing the reality of criminal activities without any political bias. We aim to educate, inform and to prevent crime by highlighting the genuine experience and stories of those affected. By sharing this video, you are contributing to a safer and more aware society. Together, we can empower individuals to see behind the facades and understand the true impact of criminal behavior. Stay tuned to our channel for more eye-opening content that aims that aim to uncover the hidden truth and dismantle the illusions surrounding criminality. We are determined at the Jamaica Young Police Channel to make a difference and reveal the reality behind the surface. 
If you haven't subscribed to the Jamaica Young Police channel, yes, please subscribe to the channel. Select all and the notification bell. Remember to give the video a thumbs up. Yes, share the video. Yes, yeah, share the video with your friend, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your son, your grandson, your neighbor, your side chick, or your mother. And tell tell them to tell tell them about the Jamaica Young Police Channel for them to tell others about the Jamaica Young Police Channel. Tell a friend to tell a friend about the Jamaica Young Police Center that we at the Jamaica Young Police Center we're a group of law-abiding citizens who aid criminals with a passion and we want our country back from these people. And we know who are these people. These are the people who have been destroying our country for the past 34 years. And all the Jamaican people want, they want back their country. That's it. Nothing else. They don't ask for any pay increase or anything. Because what's the sense of a man attaining wealth and you can live in a mansion surrounded by a burglar bar? Jamaican people would rather to live in a hut than to live in a burglar bar and rich. They would rather to live in a hut where they have peace and tranquility and have a peace of mind. As you hear that, as you, you have listened to that man when he says the pulse of the people. That he walks from Franklin Town all the way to downtown, downtown Kingston, down to, down to the pier, Kingston Mall. And then he would walk back to his home along with his family. That's a Jamaica that in the 80s that Jamaicans used to. And that's a Jamaican, Jamaica we, we at the Jamaica Young Police Center would like for you people to experience. Young, old and infirm. No biases. That's ta that, at that time... It was the government that was in charge of the streets, not the criminals. Because back then, the criminals were living in fear of losing their lives and not the law-abiding citizens. So we at the Jamaica Young Police Center, we know who are responsible for what is happening in Jamaica. As we have said before, it's not the little boy who are firing the guns, the ones who have the AK-47 rifles and the ones with the 9mm pistol. It's men like Delroy Chuck, Mark Golden, and Alt Mark Golden, um, Lisa Anna, Donna Scott Matley, and the likes, all of these, and Chief Justice Brian Lego Sykes, these are the people who are the problems. They are the ones who are contributing to the problems in Jamaica when it comes down to our criminal, criminals there. And we just want our country back. To get back our country, we need people. Politicians' role is to solve problems, not to create problems and tell us that you have no solution. As Chief Justice Brian Lego Sykes is out there campaigning for the PMP LGBTQ+. Criminal organization. So, moving on. Yeah, so as we said to, said to you before, yeah, subscribe, subscribe to the Jamaica Young Police channel if you haven't. So, and, you know, so let us work. Work towards building a safer future for all. So, in this captivating video, we delve into the remarkable story of Detective PC Dad. I have known Dad um, since 19... 87, yes, when I was at the Jamaica Police Cadet as a, as a police officer, as a cadet, and he was a recruit. Yes, I can tell you, Detective Dad, very outspoken, very decent, very decent police officer, know him stuff, very outspoken, and based on the information received and obtained, even from police officers that work at Special Branch, that this man is not a corrupted police officer. And the last information we received that he's an inspector. And we have seen... Recently, four police officers who have been promoted to deputy superintendent of police, that their, their character cannot even, they cannot even clean the dirt of a detective PC dad's shoes. And we say that, well, and we say that without any apologies. Irrespective of one say, what one says about us behind our back, we don't, we don't give credence to what people would say to us about what others says. Because a lot of people said a lot of things about us about me in their private with others and you know as usual yes you know as my mother always said if somebody tell you something that somebody say you ask them what they said then and then you will hear the deafening silence because they weren't expecting you to ask them what they have said so we don't care about what somebody want to say about us you understand because People want to protect them friends. We have no friends in, there in high places, so we we'll continue the journey. So we said that Philip Dad should at least be a deputy, at least a deputy superintendent of police. We know people who train in Philip Dad who are no longer shady but corrupt. 
And we know that Philip, we don't have, we at the time, we have no secret for Philip that. We are telling that straight up because he's not, not a corrupt police officer. I'll, you understand? So, moving on. So, this remarkable story of Detective PC Dad and his relentless pursuit of justice leading to the arrest of Buja Bantan for multiple breaches of the Dangerous Drugs Act. Witness the unveiling of the untouchable as Detective Dad fearlessly takes on elites and criminals in Jamaica. Detective Dad's unwavering commitment to upholding the law is commendable. Despite facing pressure from senior police officers and civilians alike, he remains resolute, refusing to give Bujabantan any respite from the law of Jamaica. His dedication eventually prevails, leading to a long-waiting apprehension and eventually unmasking of once, of once untouchable figure. So this eye-opening account shed lights on the exceptional work of Detective PC Dad and the challenges he feel he faced whilst infiltrating the inner circles of the criminal underworld. As we explore the intricate web of power, corruption and the pursuit of justice that ultimately exposes the truth behind Bujabantan's arrest. Through this in-depth analysis, you will gain valuable insight into the Jamaican law enforcement system, the intricate relationships between the elites and criminals and the extraordinary efforts of one detective to dismantle the system. Experience the thrilling twist and turns, the victories and setbacks and ultimately lead to the arrest of Bujabantan. Deliver with grippling storytelling and thorough research, this video provides an engaging narrative that will captivate both true crime enthusiasts and those interested in the complexity of law enforcement. Uncover the truth behind the scenes as we unravel the story of Detective P.C. Dad's remarkable mission to unmask the untouchable. With our expertly craft visuals and in-depth analysis, this video offers an un unforgettable experience. Join us as we shed light on the complexities of the case, the implications for Jamaican society, and the heroism of, of a detective who risks it all for justice. This video reveals a shocking assassination plot involving renowned reggae artist Butu Bantan, allegedly. Yes, so this video reveals a shocking assassination plot allegedly involved renowned reggae artist Butu Bantan and Detective Dad. Rumors circulated that Donald Zeke Phipps, a feared figure from Matches Lane, and associated with the PMP criminal organization had received orders allegedly from Butch Bantan to eliminate Detective PC Dodd. The criminal underworld is known for its secretive nature, but whispers reach the ears of Tivoli's strongman Christopher Dodos Cook, who swiftly intervened to prevent the assass assassination attempt. Upon conducting a thorough background investigation, Dudus discovered that Detective Dad was not a corrupt police officer and had no criminal connections. It became clear to Dudus that killing Detective Dad would serve no purpose as he was merely carrying out his duties. After a lengthy discussion of over 90 minutes, Dudus and Zeke resolved the issue, ending the dangerous plot. So you hear now for yourself, say, yeah, after dad arrested and charged Buddha Bantan for breaches of the corrupt, uh, dangerous drug act, you're going to even hear even after that, um, yeah, there was a follow-up between Dudus, uh, between um, Buddha Bantan and Zeke's, and he had purchased several tree bikes and he had to give them away to men in Rima because he said he didn't want them. Yes, because they had a falling out and you'll hear that. You, you're going to hear that too. You understand? So... After a lengthy discussion, Dudu and Zeke resolved the issue, ending the dangerous plot. So we don't know. The only thing that we can say, based on what we had received, is that during the conversation, um, Dudu was explaining to Zeke why he should not go along with Buju Bantan and kill the, let them kill this detective. Because all the detective was doing is just doing his job. And this detective is not a corrupt policeman and he's not a part of any criminal cabal. And he was uncorruptible. So, even criminal have respect for you when you're a police officer and you're not corrupt. And, you know, you understand. So, that's um, what they're saying right here about 
Detective PC Dad. So as we delve into the truth of this astonished event and witness Dudu's heroic act of preventing a potential tragedy, stay tuned for the full story of how the intervention of one man saved a dedicated officer's life. Don't miss out on the eye-opening account, unveiling the truth Dudu's prevent the assassination plot. So, yeah, so to all of you viewers and subscribers, let me repeat myself. I am not from Tivoli Gardens. I have no family in Tivoli Gardens. I have no interest in Tivoli Gardens. And I have no friends in Tivoli. The only friend that I had in Tivoli Gardens, he died like four years ago. Yes, I can tell you that. And he was in prison. And he was my schoolmate and he was a police officer too. So... What I am doing here, I'm just educating the Jamaican people based on the information received and obtained, so I'm just passing it on to you guys. You understand? As we say, I will say before, and we're going to say it again, if you know that you are a thief and you don't want people to know that you are a thief, you should not be a, you shouldn't thief then. Anything that you have done in your life, you must be proud of. As for me, I have no regret about anything that I have done in my police career. Yeah, as, yeah you understand what I'm saying? Nothing. Yes, it doesn't matter what they want to say. I have no regrets. So, we'll continue the journey. So, the, the video revealed a shocking assassination plot involving renowned reggae artist Buju Bantan and Detective Dad. So, you know, um, it was Dudu you know, who intervened and saved this policeman's life. You understand? So, we at the Jamaica Young Police Channel, you know, so we start to ask questions. Why would a known murderer and a strong man intervene on behalf of Detective PC Dad's life? Um, we got one, only, like, one little thing that they say that he used to attend stats, um, no, Dunoon. That, um, he used to attend Dunoon and he had some friends at stats. And... They didn't delve into it anymore, but it was, you understand, because they did not want to reveal certain things. So in the skeptic, uh, you know, so as we delve into the astounding true story of how, how infamous gangster leader Christopher Dudus Quok unexpectedly turned into an unlikely hero, saving the life of Detective PC Dad from the lethal aim of an assassin bullets. Prepare to be amazed as we unravel the gripping details of his extraordinary event that showcases the remarkable power of humanity and the depth to which one man can go to protect another. Why this come like a some novel? Oh, yeah, me. Well, I I know police. I, I know police officer. Yeah, I know police officers that he that do those even send them go rob. Yeah, I'm Gilroy, I'm Bud Spencer. I'm a same schoolmate with dead and them thing that him and another man was under rabbit. Yeah, yeah, him tell me, you understand? Yes. So that's why I know that Bud Spencer and Gilroy rent and the robbery car, he was there too and them thing. That. Him dead, well, him dead and them thing, that, so you understand? I know them not going to do him family or anything, because him family, them down at Tivoli, are some you know, ordinary people, them. So join us as we, you know, recount the tense moment leading up to the, um, you know, where the assassin targeted PC died for reasons unknown. Witnesses the art pounding action as Christopher Dudescock, operating an instinct and strong sense of justice, intervened in a way nobody could have anticipated. Discover the incredible sacrifices and risks involved as Quark of Fidel, while known for his criminal influence, put it all on the line to protect one man's life. Through expertly, Crafted storytelling, we shed light on the factors that compel Christopher Dudu's Quark to act as an un unexpected saviour, uncover the intricate web of relationships, motivations and circumstances that brought these two individuals together in a dramatic, life-altering manner. They start pro provoking narrative challenges, preconceived notions and shed lights on the complex nature of heroism. The unlikely hero, or Christopher Dudu's quote, rested detective PC died from an assassin bullet, bullet, is not just a story of survival and redemption, but a testament to the potential for a transformation that exists within us all. This inspiring tale serves as a reminder that sometimes the unlikeliest of individuals can rise above their circumstances and undertake acts of unimaginable bravery. Yeah, and yeah, I, 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 I'm going to tell you this now. So, 
When I was stationed at Unsby, um, so Bobby and I, we were walking in through Cockburn Pen one night. Unlikely, I just saw him say, unlikely hero. And some guys, some guys who are, um, they were a part of Mantique group. That's how when Mantique just came back from prison. And um, they wanted, um, they saw Bobby and I walking along my road drive, which was like about 10 30 there, about. We were coming from around by Clinkling Avenue. Yes. Yeah, no, we were riding our bicycle. And, yeah, men, yeah, it's a Major Jackson. Yeah, Quack, yeah, Quack had told me. Um, at at Al's, Al's, Big Al's gun range here in Allendale Beach, I went there and that's, yeah, I saw, I, and the man can't show good. Quack was a criminal. He come from Montego Bay, he used to, used to be in Catburn Pen. And Quack told me that um, it was him and Montique, yeah, why the, you know, uh, Major, Major Jackson and, even the little youth named Barled, they wanted to shoot shoot Bobby and I after we had passed. And they had guns in the yard. So sometimes, you know, so when he told me that, uh, I didn't feel any way or anything like that because, yeah, I know that if they had fire shot at us, if the ones that didn't hit us, I know what time it is, you understand? Because, you know, you have to protect yourself. So that's why we say preemptive strike save life because if you have to wait for somebody to fire a gun and them have a gun for you to defend yourself, remember, you know, the one shot can't fire and you're dead. So that's why we say preemptive to strike save life. So yeah, so like in that that case, don't Quack is a, you know, is an um, based on what he have done, you know, is an hero because you understand he and Manti had prevented gunmen from attacking us as two police officers. Not that we won't respond, but who knows what will happen? Cause it's only take one shot fight to, um, to kill you, you know. So we we'll give thanks. You understand? So moving on. So take advantage of this gripping account that explores the in interconnectedness of humanity, the power of redemption and the influence of extraordinary events and, and ordinary lives. You understand? And be the first to witness this incredible true story that will leave you astonished and make you question what is truly mean to be a hero. So, you know, so we you know, so be a son, so the people them that you know they are telling us that um the former commissioner of police Lucius Thomas have a very close relationship with DJ Bujabantan. So we go, we're gonna tell you now what happened now. So this is something um yes, it happened in two to, um in two thousand four. Yeah, so it's a entertainer Bujabantan was yeah, was fined nine thousand dollars or sixty days of possession and cultivating ganja. You're going to hear about even that with that from the MIU, MIU man and tell you who and how Bojibantan was very disrespectful to all the police and all of them things. So, however, the entertainer's attorney, Christopher Dunkley, gave verbal notice to the Affertree Court, criminal court, of his intention to appeal the magistrate's decision to record the conviction against his client. Yeah, and the reason why, you know, at the time, you know, Bojibantan have a license going, you know. Most Jamaicans didn't know that he had a license gun. So be, because Detective PC that arrested and charged him for cultivating ganja and him lose him license gun, them take it away. So that was a that was a motive for the alleged plot to kill him because Dad let him lose him gun. We never tell you before, but that had the main reason. It's not because of his arrest. His arrest lead to him losing his license firearm. So that's the reason why the alleged it now was put out and done. Oh dear you for gonna make me lose my license gun. Look how old police boy, you know how much money me you heard. Cause you know them not respect for police, you know. You know, when especially in the poor and all them have money. When them talk to you, they want to talk they, they are not they, them talk to you like them them have no respect. Never come see you, I understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so that is what happened. So he did not take um, kindly. Yeah, that you know, PC that arrest and charge him. After you know, and the amount of people they say so many people have um, contact that. So then, even at one point now, even the police hierarchy, I look at PC that sideways as if them just a weird thing book him too. So them can you know what I'm saying? 
I saw it stay, you know, corruption. So all in time here, I said the man is still inspector and him thing. That is just shocking. Because he's a man, he's a man who have impeccable character. You understand? Yeah, and um, boy, may I tell you, Jamaica is really the criminal's paradise. This is the man, you know, may I tell you, you know, PC that is a man where I get fired from him that training school. All because, yeah, some people that say, hear them say, him chat too much. Him not chat too much, the man always speak the truth. But the thing is that now with PC that now, PC that, yeah, him still, like, him not, if him know something, him not go keep it, him attack. You understand? So even some of my people, them that are friends with him, them not really like him, in a per se, you know. Them not go tolerate him because him know him work and him thing, but him not afraid for call out the thief them. You understand? And the thief, they never like him. So, moving on. So the entity you know, whose real name is Mark Myri was arrested by Kansan Spring Police on December 3rd. Yes, that was in 2003. So, yeah, so that was, uh, you know, three weeks and one day before Christmas, that lock him up. Yeah, man, charge him. You understand? So the cops enter his Kingston recording studios and uprooted two fully grown ganja plants. He was subsequently charged with possession of ganja. However, a second charge of cultivating ganja was slapped on him when he appeared in court, Bantan dressed in a khaki jeans pants and a green striped shirt, sat penitently in the dock yesterday as resident magistrate Kisa Leng imposed a fine of 3,030 3, days for a possession of ganja and 6,030 days for cultivating of the weed. So now, hey, all right, so you see it now. So now, hey, you know, say, this what happened then in the 2003. This now who could not be a crime in a Jamaica. Who did that? Which one of your government, which one of your party did that? And then you know, tell me now, say, boy, uh, boy, you're a labor right and them thing there. This law, you know, was on the books some long time. And them legalize it now. So no wonder you have so much so many fatal accidents in a Jamaica because most of the youth them high. Because they can't smoke ganja publicly. Who did that? Yeah man, the criminal organization. Anything for destroy the people, you know. Yeah, if you look on the fatality compared to uh, the years them since them legalized it, just look it's a climb. Them the lovely people, you know. But not until one one of these days, one of their children or one of them. Die from the people who are smoke ganja publicly and kill one of them or them children. And then you go see them cry. I saw them stay in anything. Incest, them say they want to legalize incest. Yeah, them say they want to say, boy, the rectum is a sex organ. They want to say, body wall a sex organ. You understand? I saw them stay. Anything go for them. They don't have no moral standard because of criminal organization. No, look at that bad blood. I don't care what they want to say. You have to have morality. You understand? So, moving on. So, Bantan was found guilty of the offence. You know. Still, when he returned to court for sentences, his attorney asked the court to postpone the sentences as he was asking the court to exercise its discretion in not recording the ganja conviction against his client. He also submitted that he would be researching two pieces of legislation determining whether the court had any discretion not to record the sentence. Dunkley, in his submission, referred the court to a recent conviction of popular entertainer Lucia, Luciana, whose real name is Jeppa McClymon, for possession of ganja. He pointed out that the court exercised its discretion and did not record the conviction against him and asked the court for the similar treatment. All right, you see, this right now, why they're not going to treat Bujabantan the same. It's because Abuja Bantan, everybody know Abuja Bantan in the background, you know, Abuja Bantan is not an ordinary artist. Abuja Bantan is not a Sean Paul. When you talk about good art, that's why Sean Paul is successfully international, you know, not a controversial youth. Come from uptown, although him father is involved in a one and two look of things, that's not Sean Paul. I'm father that Sean Paul have him own, him own persona. You never hear Sean Paul involved in a fight. You never hear Sean Paul do no music for kill nobody and this and that and them things. I know Sean Paul had never in a confrontation with the police. You understand? So, moving on. So, Luciana, a resident charged with having a spliff in, in his possession and pleaded guilty and was fined. Three on three thousand dollars. His conviction was not recorded. After listening to the submission yesterday, resident magistrate Leng 
explain that under the Resident Magistrate Act, records must be kept of convicted person pointed out Section 3 of the Fingerprint Act state that where a person is convicted, the fingerprints may be taken and kept. Nothing that the situation was different in this case. The magistrate cited Section 4 of the Act which said that if a fingerprint order is made, his fingerprint shall be recorded. If the defendant is convicted, the court is of the opinion that the case is not a proper one to exercise this discretion, Leng said before handing down sentence. But the magistrate said he hoped he hope that it, it conviction will not do irreparable harm to him, Bantan, but until the court and the country decide what will be done by legislation regarding ganja, conviction and fingerprints, the court will have to go by the present laws. Dunkley told the observer that, that although Bantan accepted the court's verdict, the entertainer was nevertheless upset. He has accepted the verdict, but he is upset about it. As, as he plead, is not guilty. He has given me instruction to appeal the matter because despite his conviction, he maintained that he knows nothing of the cultivation of, of the ganja. And that may I tell you, so criminal state, though, or people, you understand? Yeah. And the reason why we say that and anything, because Abuja Bantan is a convicted coke dealer from <laughs> in America. Yeah. You understand? And in the Japan camera, he is coke in America. You, know? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And him got prison for 10 years in America. Yeah, and he might try to do everything now for, you know, for um, change, you know, everything about Buju Bantan, you know, for sure, so boy, Buju Bantan, yeah, Buju Bantan, you know, eat and Buju Bantan, and this and Buju Bantan, and that. You understand? Because Buju Bantan want to travel and come back to America, North America, because once he's convicted on certain things, you know, especially um, drug dealing. But you know, eventually, you know, so them soon, them soon give a clean police record like I convicted drug dealer Isaac Buchanan. You understand? I just saw it go on them things in Jamaica, a criminal's paradise. You understand? So, I just saw it go. Yeah. So, you know, so this came to be, um, and him saying the known, but I lie, my tell. Because he's going to hear from the MIU, MIU soldier. Who, you know, he know everything about the man. He's going to tell you about who was there and one and two little things. You understand? In the next video, you will hear for yourself. Because over here, you know, we're going to um, just tell you things. We have collaborative, you know, collaboration from people who were involved and they will tell you. You understand? So, this captivating video delves into the untold story of Lucius Thomas, the former commissioner of police and officer in charge in charge of the special branch and his intriguing connection with legendary reggae artist Buju Bantan. Discover the hidden depths of their relationship and explore their roles behind the scene. Unravel the secrets, mysteries and controversies surrounding their bond as we shed light on their journey together. Prepare to be fascinated by the intertwined path of these influential figures. Join us as we unveil the truth behind the ignorant Connection between Lucius Thomas and Buja Danton. It's time for the world to know the extraordinary stories. So yeah, so we are telling now. Um, we did not even know that you know that um, they had put out a it to kill a let you know to kill um, PC dad. This is you know it's just it's just shocking to us. I don't even know. well I don't know if PC dad had known that there was an it on him to kill him after he had arrested Buja Danton because he lost his firearm. Yes, he lost his license, firearm, and because of that, he was upset. And based on the information received and obtained, allegedly, he ordered um, for them to, because once, once that is dead now, then he cannot go to court to testify, no witness. So even police, I saw, them, I saw Jamaican people thinking, you know, so once they kill the police officer who's involved in the case, there's no one there to testify. And, and you know, you know Jamaica, all the police, um, the members, them corrupt, all them have to do on them things that the others who were there just give them some money and them not turn up a quote or them turn up a quote and then they say something totally different from what really happened and make certain things work. Because money, and in Jamaica, money are gone. Yeah, money I truth. You understand? Yes. So, we are very, very um, fortunate to know that, um, you know, that PC that is still alive. You understand? I don't know if he had known before that there was an it on him, a plot to assassinate him, and it was this man, Christopher Dudu Scoke, 
who intervene why um, you know why the assassin bullet did not you know found him wherever he was then because he had caused Bujibantan to lose his license of firearm and he was upset and he allegedly um, the connection that he had with Zeke's allegedly you know asked so that they you know take um, send Philip Philip PC dad to the departure loan. Yes, we are the Jamaica Young Police Center. We know PC died for, from 1987. Yeah, and, and as we say, and we said before, you know, irrespective of what people want, you know, uh, talking this, and irrespective of what someone said behind us, we're not going to use that as gospel. Because you understand, we don't, because as my mother always saying, if somebody says something about you behind your back, and somebody tell you, you have to ask the other person, what did they say when the person say what they said? You understand? And knowing PC that, PC that anything him say, him can't talk it publicly. Yeah, that's why he is. Yeah, that's why we have a lot of respect for him. But as we say, and, and we continue, there are several, um, many, many um, gazette officers right now in our police force who do not have quarter of this man, this, this man integrity and character. And reputation as a detective, but yet they say he's an inspector. I cannot believe. So it pay, in Jamaica, it really pays for you to be a criminal police. Yeah, man. Once you collect money for certain people, once you are thief, once you sell keys, once you collect money and give up man gun and all of them thing there. Yeah, PC that never do any of them thing there. Never. You understand? Cause PC that could have make money. If he want out of this, you know, with the Bujibantan case, after him arrest and charge him, based on what the information that we had received, he went up to him. Uh, we tried to get a number from PC that to, you know, to, um, for him to either confirm or deny if he knew about it. But unfortunately, we didn't um, receive a number because, you know, most police and them thing, uh, you understand, the few, the, the, the ones who we have spoken to, they are the ones that, um, Honest, ethical, and decent, but at the same time, they just want they don't want people to know that you know, say boy, I'm still in contact with Porter and, and one and two little things. So that's what everything is. That's what it's all about. So I hope you enjoy the video. Have yourself a beautiful day, Jamaica Young Police Channel. Oh, and to all police, just stay safe. Remember, you know, I'm got three people you trust me, myself, and I. Yeah, man, and heal up PC that. And all the other hard-working detectives. Yeah, man. Detective Ruben Gunter, M. Ford Wade. Yeah. And not by calling a man name that not supposed to make, that not supposed to make the authority, the hierarchy, want to put an asterisk beside the name. Because you understand what I'm saying. And um, I have a cousin. I know that boy Willie, Willie, uh, boy Willie, a sergeant, must be about 20 years now. I just saw it go Willie. You understand? So... Yeah, we might about four more years left in our police force. I have other people in it, so and them things. But uh, you know the police force, you have to be connected, you know, if you, you have to be connected to rise up, you know, in the ranks. And when you're not, if you're not a godfather, I just saw it go and them things. So yeah man, so Jamaica Young Police Channel. Out.